Mr. Ambassador, it is a true privilege and honor for me as President of the State of Israel to open my home to you, the newly appointed Ambassador of the United States of America, Baruch Haba Ambassador Tom Niles. The people of Israel welcome you with open arms and an open heart. For us, this is a celebration of a shared vision and common values, liberty and equality, freedom, human rights, and friendship with our closest ally. Personally, my family has been engaged and involved with over 14 successive American presidents. Growing up in the United States, I was strongly influenced by the spirit of the American Constitution, by its social diversity, and by the great tradition of your democracy. This is why it is a special pleasure for me to host you, Mr. Ambassador, here in the President's residence, Beit Anasi, to receive your credentials and light the eighth and final Hanukkah candle with you. I have a small surprise for you. In your youth, you attended Hebrew and Sunday school in the small Jewish community of Duluth, Minnesota. I've invited the principal of the school, my good friend Elizabeth Eli Aloni, you can raise your hand, who is sitting right here to join us today, and she remembers you as a young adolescent. You may not remember her, but she remembers you. That's not good. And Tom, this must be where you really studied good Hebrew. <laughs> Mr. Ambassador, I must add how touched we were by President Biden's warm remarks at the Hanukkah candle lighting ceremony on Thursday at the White House as he graciously welcomed Israel's new ambassador to the United States, my dear brother, Mike Herzog. Far beyond the personal connection, this is heartwarming because it is a consistent display of President Biden's long-standing, genuine friendship with Israel. I take this opportunity to express my deep gratitude to President Biden for his tireless support and his uncompromising commitment to the iron-clad relations between Israel and the United States. My, uh, an alliance which should always be above partisan politics, enjoying the support of all administrations. You should know, Mr. Ambassador, that for the people of Israel, this is meaningful beyond measure. I know how deeply you, Ambassador Dines, care about the U.S.-Israel connection and intend to develop and deepen it throughout your term. Israel very much looks forward to working together in harmony and in full partnership. You are coming to a more hopeful region. The Abraham Accords are a real strategic and regional game changer. It is essential that we realize the potential of these historic accords alongside the United States of America. I was pleased to discuss this with the Crown Prince of the United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Mohammed Ben Zayed, in our warm and friendly phone conversation over the weekend. Mr. Ambassador, without a doubt, the greatest challenge Israel and the United States face is the common threat posed by Iran. We are closely following the international community's recent negotiations with Iran. Israel will welcome a comprehensive diplomatic solution which permanently solves the Iranian nuclear threat. In the case of a failure to achieve such solution, Israel is keeping all options on the table, as, and it must be said that if the international community does not take a vigorous stance on this issue, Israel will do so. Israel will protect itself. Ambassador Knight, I thank you so much for joining us today with your son, Max, and I wish you a satisfying, enjoyable, 
and successful stay in Israel together with your excellent team. I look forward to visiting the United States in the near future and meeting with my good friends, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris and the entire administration in order to further our common goals and strengthen the historic links between our two great democracies and peoples. Thank you, good luck, Batslacha and Chag Sameach. Mr. President, it is a great honor to be here this afternoon to present my credentials to President Herzog as the 21st Ambassador of the United States to Israel. I'm humbled to have been asked by President Biden to represent my country before the State of Israel. And in the words of President Biden, it further strengthens our country's unbreakable ties. As I've said before, I cherish the opportunity to reconnect with this beautiful country, a country I came to know as a 15-year-old traveling all the way from Duluth, Minnesota. And what a special treat it is for me to have my Hebrew school teacher. Please do not test me on my Hebrew, however, but uh, thank you very much. During that time, I had the opportunity to climb Masada at 3 a.m., sleep in the Sinai Desert, and work on a kibbutz, which I actually visited this Friday, of course, after my quarantine. Mr. President, you and I share the firm commitment to security, economic prosperity, and democracy for both our nations. You have been a close friend and ally of the United States since the early days of your career. Most importantly, you came by it naturally, following the footsteps of a very impressive family. And Mr. President, an added bonus for me is I now get to work with your brother to strengthen the bonds between our countries. My agenda as ambassador will be first and foremost to reinforce our unshakable and enduring commitment to Israel's defense. And I want to take a moment to reiterate, as President Biden has said, that the United States fully supports the replenishment of the Iron Dome. We will continue to collaborate closely and advance peace and stability and to counter the threat from Iran poses to Israel and the region. And as President Biden has made it very, very clear, the United States is committed to ensuring that Iran never develops a nuclear weapon. As Ambassador, I intend to work tirelessly to further strengthen Israel's long-standing peace agreements with Egypt and Jordan, as well as to build on the great work of the Abraham Accords. President Biden and Secretary Blinken have been unequivocal in their support for these groundbreaking initiatives. We do not view normalization as a substitute, however, for Israel-Palestinian peace. Instead, we seek to harness existing and future agreements to improve the lives of Palestinians with a view to preserving the vision of a new negotiated two-state solution. Ultimately, the viability of any relationship is measured by the people-to-people -people connections. On this front, I'm committed to furthering the depth and breadth of the bonds between our people. In particular, business-to-business -business relations, which are already strong thanks to our shared values of free market economy and fair competition. I will also continue this administration's work with Israel counterparts in hopes of Israel joining the visa waiver program. I look forward to working with Israel to protect the freedoms of expression, association, and peaceful assembly to reflect our shared democratic traditions, to create an atmosphere where all voices can be heard and to highlight the efforts to advance the rights of members of vulnerable and minority communities. I will also stand up against all efforts to isolate and delegitimize Israel internationally. I will continue to work with this administration to firmly reject the BDS movement and boycott laws that unfairly single out Israel. It is abundantly clear that we have a world-class partner in President Herzog in the State of Israel to advance all facets of this relationship. The rich diversity of the people and experiences in our nations put us in good stead to reach new levels of cooperation. As we celebrate the final night of Hanukkah, I look forward to working with you, Mr. President, 
and the women and the men of Israel we have in common, challenges, and to work to enhance our already strong, vibrant relationship. Hag Shemeah and Toda Rabah. Thank you.